There we go. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. All right, I'm recording. Yep, red light's on, it's, it's recording. For an engineer, the safety, health and welfare of the public is absolutely paramount. And if we don't do that, we easily can hurt or harm hundreds to millions of people. An engineer with one mistake can kill more people than any other professional. And the reason for this is we create things that are going to last 50, 100, you know, sometimes even a thousand years. And they've got to be safe throughout the entire duration of their life. The public has a right to be able to get their products made in a safe manner. The public has a right and the workers have a right to not expect any serious issues. When you go to sleep every night in your home, you just assume that the building's going to last through the night. There's not even a question about it. And if, if I look at what is important when it comes to ethics, it's very clearly, do you understand right from wrong? Engineers in general want to advance human society. And because we want to do that, we want to help mankind. Ethics plays a, a very important portion in ensuring that you're helping and not hurting those around you. The problem is that next to mining, there are more deaths in construction than any other industry on the planet. There's an opportunity when large sums of money are involved, there is always an opportunity to do the wrong thing. And it is never right to do the wrong thing. If you have good ethics, you, you will have a good safety culture. What happened at both the Challenger and the Columbia were similar failure modes. It was just a different item of the shuttle. People knew that there were issues, but they were unable to raise their concerns. If anybody has any concern about anything at any point in time, please bring it forward because good news is bad news delivered early enough to do something about it. People have been driving cars for the last 100 years. However, uh, what we know is that we lose over 1 million lives every year worldwide to traffic fatalities. Autonomous vehicles have the potential to save millions of lives Self-driving cars uh, don't get distracted, they don't get drunk, they don't get angry. An ethical approach is central to what we do at Waymo. One of the more interesting projects that we have is the uh, exoskeleton project. It's very similar to what folks have seen on video games where we want to make our soldiers stronger, faster, and able to see the battlefield in a more efficient way using virtual reality. That is one of the coolest projects out, is one of the things that's going to be cutting edge, and it's one of the things that's going to save soldiers' lives. You know, at the Mention Inks where I work as an engineer, we are developing materials and 3D printing structures out of those materials that go inside the human body. That's a very big level of safety. We go through extensive biological testing and we need to pass those tests. We need to show that whatever we're making is safe long-term inside the body and that it can also be properly used by the doctors and the surgeons who will be the ones putting these things inside people. If I think about COVID, I know chemical engineers right now that are working to bring a vaccine to all of us. Chemical engineers are involved in every phase of the vaccine uh, from the creation, the idea of where does the substrate of the, of the vaccine come from. The chemical engineer will also be engaged in separating any impurities that may show up in the vaccine so that you get the most efficacious drug that you possibly can. The Burzner Stadium is one of my projects. 
So one of the big challenges of a project like the Bird's Nest Stadium is you're going to have an event. The whole world is going to see it. There's going to be 100,000 people or more inside the stadium. It's got to be safe. An engineer is the, is the linchpin, and we make sure that at every step, we have a factor of safety in there. We want to understand what that factor of safety is. We want to understand if this goes wrong, how can we ensure that there, no one is going to get hurt? Without an engineer in the room, you are planning to fail. You know, I was driven by not only my curiosity for science and engineering, but wanting to apply it to make people's lives better. At the time when I got into the field, I didn't know to call that ethics. But now I know everything I do, every decision I make has some ethical component to it, ethics at its core. But society has a responsibility too. The policymakers and the purchasers of the products that engineers create need to understand that we are ethically driven and we are developing plans and designs and executing them for the betterment of society. And we expect the other parts of society to do the same. If you want to make a difference in the world, be an engineer because engineers build the world. And I don't think there's another job on earth where you can get that sense of pride and creation other than engineering. My advice to any of the future engineers would be to think differently and you've got to think outside of the box. And so we'll be waiting on you. Together, we can build a better planet. Uh, to stop recording. Okay.